Yo, what's up gamers? It's Depression Thursday. Let's get that psychological horror drama rolling, gamers. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, um, my name's Tan. <laughs> I've been doing this for two years and on this channel... <laughs> Man, I gotta shut the fuck up sometimes. Hi, Meryl. Welcome in. <laughs> we, we are going to play Depression. We're going to play... Uh. <laughs> and... Uh, I forgot to set it up, actually. We'll get into it. We'll get right into the news. Yep. Yep. How have you been doing, though? My day was pretty... Well, not my day. Oh, yeah. My day was pretty eventful. I decided, like, after laying down and watching YouTube shorts for too long of a time, uh, I decided I wanted to exercise. So I pulled up an exercise. It was a burn. In the title, it was like, da 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 burn. And I was like, okay, yeah, I can do that. Ooh. Hold on. Uh... I have to window capture this game because it is foolish and also too big. Hello? Why? Why too big? Why too small? Yep. Okay, that's the one. We got it. 
It has been clean and uneventful. Best I could ask for. Wait, actually a bad event happened, but I will ignore it. Okay, let's go. <laughs> I, love, I love the the realization like, oh yeah, my day was okay. 2 p.m., 3 p.m. Oh, wait. You know, didn't happen. <laughs> hello, hello. Welcome in. Oh yeah, I was talking about my day. Um, I decided to click on that exercise video and i was doing it y you know you know i was feeling like super extra super hyper ultra galaxy baby today and i was like yeah i'll do these stretches beforehand too and then i'll get into this exercise oh i don't like this exercise so i'm going to sub substitute it for jumping like i was doing the most i had the, the five pound weights i was I was gaming, and then I was too, too, too excited. <laughs> I I looked before I leapt, and I still fell. <laughs> I decided to like. I looked at the wall where I usually do this like neck straightening exercise, right? Where. Like you put your you put your neck up against the wall and then you like straighten your shoulders and you stay there for a while and your posture uh straightens, you know? You Pete, you've heard of that, I'm sure, right? Right. So I did that and God I got off the wall after that and I was like, yeah, okay, okay. And then I start feeling like lightheaded and hearing like leaves my right ear and i start hearing ringing and i'm like oh oh god okay okay uh okay and then like i <laughs> like <laughs> i'm like oh shit oh shit this is the fainting feeling oh god oh fuck um i i i like sit down no i stand up and i'm like okay maybe don't sit down ah uh, maybe don't stand up that makes it worse by the way Work out it too fast. It was too fast. You're right. I work out it too fast and my body got whiplash. My sedentary body, who would have thought, got whiplash from doing the burn workout. I'm okay. Um, but like in that moment of like standing there, like flabbergasted, I googled like, I worked out too fast. I feel like I'm gonna faint. What do I do? <laughs> Enter. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was like, okay, sit down. It says sit down, put your head between your legs. My dumbass, like, put my legs, my knees up and then put my head between them like it would do something. And then I realized, oh, they mean put your head down. Idiot. <laughs> Fool. Completely unexpected that you would get whipped from going from a 2 to an 8. Totally unforeseeable. <laughs> The consequences of my own actions. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> but yeah, it was a good workout though. That's the thing. I I felt it and it was good. But putting your head up against the wall and like straightening out your neck is like a life hack apparently to drain all the blood from your brain and um, faint. <laughs> if you want to do that, that's step one and step two. Step three. I didn't do, but if you wanted to. Um, after that, I had the, the, like, I also asked a friend because I was like, oh shit, oh fuck, help me, what do I do, please? <laughs> and they said, lay down, and I was like, okay, I guess it's okay to lay down. I guess I won't die if I lay down, because what, it, you know you have that thought of like, the logical thing to do in this situation is to, do this thing. But what if that's like the common misconception and you do it and you like get an aneurysm or something. So that's what my brain was going through. I was like, uh, yeah. do I lay down? Do I lay down to get blood to blow, flow, bla bra ooh, flow back into my brain? Jesus. Lay down to regulate blood like pouring a cup of water sideways. <laughs> it's, it'll get there, right? Right? But yeah, that was one part of my day. Let's also 
Uh oh, that was the wrong one. Uh oh, I haven't played this in too long. Uh oh. No, no. Quit. <laughs> no. Okay, this one for real. Unable to sink to the steam cloud. That's fine. It's fine. Um, I also went a little job hunty today. That was also interesting because I found one that was kind of like schnutz, but it, it's a very weird. It's such a weird thought. Um, me, like seeing myself in that position. Let me get you the title, actually. I have it open still. It just says educator slash facilitator. And you read the description. Hold on. Let me read the description. <laughs> the first thing you see is like $18.50 to $19 an hour. And you're like, what the hell? What kind of like low skill set job is this? So you look at it and you realize like, oh, you're speaking to like students and adults about, about this program that they have and glazing over it's like, oh, sexual risk avoidance. Yeah. Uh, speaking to middle schools, high schools, community organizations. Um, are you passionate about having a positive, <laughs> a positive impact on teens? Uh, we have so-and-so-and-so and competitive pay, and all you have to do is speak and organize your speeches and... Commitment to remain abstinent outside of marriage while working for... blank. <laughs> and... I thought about it for a while. That's not me, for one. That... A baseline? I already messed up. I already fucked up the, the requirement. <laughs> So, but I considered the thought, like, could I speak about this one? Wait. I considered the thought of, like, speaking about, you know, it would be positive. Like, sexual health, you need to know about that, especially in, in like, more conservative states. You would think, like, someone, someone less conservative or more open to ideas rather you know someone like that would be good i think because it's not you can imagine a facilitator like that and you're already annoyed like they are they believe in no sex b because it's bad in the eyes of amen right but thinking about myself in that position it's like i can have a different stance on it Granted, I just have to lie about being abstinent before marriage. <laughs> like, hmm. $19 an hour, but I gotta I gotta say that I'm like pure and holy. <laughs> Greetings, calcium cream pals. How we doing? Hey exist. <laughs> We're doing good. Um, just starting, of course. Prelude the first visitor. I don't remember what this is, but we'll get into it as we go on. Same vibes as looking at a suburban white mom to tell me about harem anime. Yeah, it's like... It's like... Hmm. Like... My, my thought on it was like... I could be cool about the speeches. Like, I could be like... Hey guys. We're gonna talk about sex today. <laughs> And then I could get them to laugh and shit at my stupid jokes. But my concern would be like the Karens in the audience being like, Um, are you really a true supporter of abstinence before marriage? Um, I don't think your attitude really reflects that. And considering that you mentioned that you did so and so and so, I really don't think that you're setting a good example for my kid. I signed them up for this absence program expecting the Lord and Savior to be the main backing point. But here I am learning about sexual transmit diseases or whatever you said. Um, the rates of at which people have sex before marriage. I don't want my kid to know that. I don't want my kid to know that. And I feel like I'll have to deal with, like, if I'm myself in these speeches, I will have to deal with that. Which, it could be funny. 
<laughs> it could be like cool. But the main thing that like is teetering me is that I would have to travel to all these locations in order to give the speeches. So I'm considering like, is it, do I make enough with that salary that they're giving to warrant travel costs as well? But it would be so funny if I like walked up on stage and was like, hey, let me tell you about the virtues of sex after marriage. You, you, your body is a temple, men and women. And you don't want to be cringe like me having sex at this blank, blank age. <laughs> And honestly, I look back, I, I look back at the things I did, I cringe. I've grown from it. But still, it's very cringe to be tied up in a hotel cabinet. And you're sitting there thinking to yourself, Did I sign up for this? Is this for what is good for me? Is this respectful to me? And I don't want you kids to be in that situation. I want you to be grown, fully developed, with a partner you love and trust. And then you take that leap. Am I right? Am I right? Thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm gonna be honest, I'm both for a hot minute. I got a 92 on my math test. All you eat my ass, but not really. I'm hype. Let's go. <laughs> That's good. Do you usually not get high scores? I'm proud you got a 92. Sex before marriage ain't a bad thing. No, it's not. But considering that they are very like, we believe in it. We need to teach these kids about abstinence. It's like, oh, they're like that. I believe sex is sometimes just sex too. I, you're right. <laughs> Bickering with Karens, debatable. Traveling, that's where the line is drawn. <laughs> I mean, I'm not about to pay like a hundred dollars to go somewhere, you know? If I'm if I have that money within a week, is it really worth it to to like you know toss up those two things? I don't think. Ah, I remember where we were a little bit. Um, can we scroll perhaps? Yeah. She was like not adopted, but she was in this limbo for a long time? Excuse me. Oh, wait. Wink. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she was in this limbo for a long time. Ah, uh -huh. no, no, no. Okay. And then for the, like, for so long, da 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 da. And then the door opens, and then it's like a man. And then, um,. And then she gets like, hate, not taken, but under winged, you know, taken under his wing. Yeah, that's what I mean. <clears throat> um, they, they, they asked for a, a male servant, but they got a lady servant and that's her. That's Giselle. And... This is the the first chapter's person's grandfather. Yeah, this is like the first, the earliest instance of the mansion, I think. I think what- ah, I remember, okay. We're going through all of the instances, the chapters, about real. Like, what really happened and everything, I'm pretty sure. I think. Maybe. Um... What if I load it again and then, uh, and then we don't skip over the text? <laughs> Yoop. It says prelude, so that's like. I forgot her voice. Ah, next issue. I forgot her voice. Um. I remember she was kind of. I imagine at this point she's pretty reserved and like 
She's been there for so long that she's lost herself, right? So it's valid for me to give her another voice, right? Just like a, a solemn... A solemn, like, I lost myself soul kind of voice, but I'm still doing things. I'll give her the original maid voice, how about that? That's what I'm trying to get to. <clears throat> I wrote time skip alongside in-game time skip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's been a while, I'm sorry. We had we had spooky things to do. And bug fables, so you know. Mm -mm -mm -mm. She's like uh mm -hmm. I am the maid. I am the maid of this house. No, that's so boring. Ugh. I remember her other voice was so high and now this one is so low, so that's why I'm so scrambled. Yeah. Hmm. What if I just made you decide? What if you just tell me which voice? High high type or low type voice? This is for the maid that you saw for a little split second. The pale, black-haired uh Giselle. I will I will abide, not abide. I will I will obey. <laughs> Hi, she still got a fall for <laughs> Oh shit, you're right. <clears throat> mm. Yeah, Michelle, right? I remember she said Michelle a lot in this breathy voice. Mm. Perhaps. Perhaps. She was kind of spunky too because she had an attitude because she like, like liked him. Hi Juan, welcome in. Also, welcome in Rolex. Hi, hi, hi. We're, we're voicing. Um, the recap is new master, old maid. Yeah. Hayden did not go easy on me either. In addition to my day-to-day -day duties, I studied etiquette, the language, proper pronunciation, and formal diction. Anytime I made the slightest mistake, he would shout his dissatisfaction. Ooh. Please give her a Yoda voice. Why? She's so nice! <laughs> I could give it to the old man. <laughs> okay, wait. I've never seen Star Wars. <laughs> wait, before everything. I don't know what he sounds like. <laughs> Carefully, you must listen. The face of a house a servant is. Her master's gaff, a servant's gaff is. I have no idea. Of, I ain't got no fucking clue. <laughs> always keep this in mind. You're not just a maid. You must always act with elegance and grace. You must always maintain your composure, even if the house is falling down around you. Whatever happens, you deal with it quickly and quietly. Your language must be immaculate. No ums, uhs, or pauses. For any reason. Y yes, sir. No stammering either. S sorry! Uh, I didn't mean to stammer! Sorry! <laughs> Bloody hell, you are not going to make this easy, are you? Whose idea was it that a country bumpkin would make a good servant? I'd like to give him a piece of my mind. I... I... I'm not from the country. She's pouting! Not even slightly. I was raised in the capital. Is that so, eh? A prim and proper city girl, are ya? In that case, you should be a quick study. Absolutely. I can learn anything in a week, tops. Piece of cake. Is that so? All right then, starting tomorrow, I'm tripling your lessons. I... I didn't think this through. <laughs> In addition to being my master, Hayden was my teacher. When he yelled, he grew twice his size and I shrunk to half mine. But it wasn't all an unpleasant experience, because I knew he wasn't raising his voice to belittle me. His instruction may have been harsh, but it was human interaction. There were people around that I could talk to, and that was wonderful. I was starting to regain some of my humanity. Damn, she pouting! She still got emotion- Yeah! She's regaining her humanity, she said. Isn't that great? Unlike me, you've still got a long life ahead of you, young lady. Damn. 
I don't know what kind of life you've lived, but I can't imagine it's been all that easy. Not many servant girls your age without a home to go back to. Which is why... Which is why you need to learn this. Once you've got all the rules and customs down, you'll be able to hold your own at any noble's estate. You shouldn't have any trouble keeping yourself employed. I'm sure you think I'm just a loud, obnoxious old man, but I believe we met for a reason, so I hope you'll stick with me. I... um... I don't think about you like that at all, Master. You're a remarkable man. One more time. I deeply appreciate your generous consideration, Master, from the bottom of my heart. I... Aww... You know, maybe she could have stayed sane by researching FNAF lore. <laughs> all that time, all that lore. True. Those, those videos, like Markiplier's... Um, game theory? That's a lot of content. That's multiple seasons of content. She could have- I mean, I know it was like centuries and centuries, but... There's a lot of FNAF stuff that I, even I don't know- I don't know anything about FNAF, honestly. I didn't know that- ooh, ooh. I didn't know much about Hayden's situation. Why he had retired to this mansion all alone, away from the rest of his family. But anytime I asked about them, he would say, it happens sometimes. With a melancholic frown. Before long, two years had passed. By that point, my etiquette had improved enough to satisfy his high standards. In that time, the mansion underwent a number of decor changes, as Hayden brought in sculptors to work on different areas of the house. He also sealed off rooms that were not in use, such as the observation tower and the chapel. It was a sad thing seeing areas with so many memories from me falling into disuse. But as a mere servant, I had no say in the matter. In addition, Hayden seemed to really... Hayden seemed to greatly enjoy renovating the house, so I watched him warmly. <laughs> really, really. Can you believe it? It's more Fate of Morgana, hi Mars. <laughs> I can't believe it either. We're doing it. The furniture was all gradually replaced, gorgeous paintings hung on the walls, colorfully patterned Clara curtains installed. Curtains? <laughs> <laughs> and a brilliant rose garden planted. These roses come from all across the world. Nowhere else you can see so many different varieties in one place. It's beautiful. Did you know that? In the city, people are starting to call the mansion Rose Manor? Rose Manor. <laughs> and to think there used to be nothing but weeds here. Amazing how much it has changed. I never thought I would see this garden turn into something beautiful. So beautiful. <laughs> Are you fond of roses, young lady? Yes, red ones especially. Because she was <laughs> uh, Red roses mean a great deal to me. They remind me... Of a time long past. Given one as a gift, were you? No, I believe I was the one who gave the rose. So red roses are a symbol of my feelings. They're very precious to me. I gave you a rose as a gift. You plucked it from its stem and placed it in my hair. Am I remembering correctly? My memories are so vague now. I can't even remember look on your face that day. There are some kids I'd like to give roses to myself. Who? My grandchildren. Oh my, you have grandchildren. Aye, though we haven't been in touch for some time. Last I saw them was four years ago, when my, th when my second grandchild was born. The sweetest girl in the world with lovely flaxen hair. She's going to be a real beauty when she grows up. Anyway, they're wonderful kids. And one day, I want to hand this garden over to them, each and every rose containing my hope that they'll lead comfortable, healthy lives, free of strife. I'm sure your wish will come to pass. Your grandchildren will have wonderful lives. Aye. They kind of did. They kind of did. No one died, right? If I remember right, no one died in that chapter. <laughs> The grief of not having you around still weighed heavily on my mind, but I was slowly approaching contentedness. Life with Hayden was slow and uneventful, 
peaceful and relaxing. I imagine my heart was seeking anything to alleviate its pain, and it found that in the beautifully remodeled mansion, the garden blooming wildly with roses, and my time with Hayden. I was even beginning to think this life was enough for me. That I would be okay with this being the end, if it meant more of the tranquility I felt. I was like a coward, considering giving up the fight. Please do- No. Oh. Please do forgive me for ever considering such a thing. Damn. Oh, my girl. My lady. Hayden seemed to be in high spirits that day. A gift had apparently arrived from his son, who lived far away. It was in a tea set. In it was a tea set, some leaves, and a small jar of sugar. Miss. Miss. How can I be of service, Master? Brew me up a pot of this, would you? Be careful not to steep it for too long. You want to get it just right for the best flavor. As you wish, Master. <laughs> you seem quite pleased. <sighs> Why would I be? A boy who shunned his old man for years sends him a paltry gift on a whim. I'm just entertaining his fancy. <laughs> cute! She's cute! Your tea is ready, master. Ah, what a wonderful smell. Tea and roses are life's best damn spices. Now, let's see what that boy chose for me. If it's no good, I'll be sure to write him an angry letter. He looks so happy. He must really love his family. I have to highlight you. <laughs> Thank you, Lars. <laughs> You're too nice. Mm, it's a little bitter. Shall I brew another pot? No, it's not your fault. Must be something in the leaves. Would you like to add some sugar, then? There was a small jar of it with the tea set. Now that's some bloody fine sugar he's procured. White as snow and sparkles in the light. He chose it just for you, master. Bloody hell, what demon possessed him? Alright, give me two spoons then. Yes, master. Here you are. Mm. Ah, splendid. This is some exquisite tea. True, I kind of just absorbing her. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's nice to, to get into it, isn't it? I think that's like the appeal of reading visual novels by yourself too. You get to just be in that world for however long you play. It's nice. Hayden, that's true. Ooh, the true spice of life is tea, roses, and crack cocaine. Ah, it sparkles in the light. Pass me that credit card, will you? <laughs> I don't read it. No. <laughs> shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. The sugar balances the bitterness of the leaves perfectly. I guess that boy does have some. Master? It was anthrax! No! It was anthrax! It was crack cocaine! <laughs> he was too old for the crack cocaine, no! <coughs> Master! Master! <coughs> the, the doctor! I need to find the doctor! <coughs> water! Water! I'll get you some water right away! So please, please hang in there! Ooh. Ooh. Damn, I kind of wanted to say it, but I didn't really think he was poison. <laughs> Man, his son did dislike him. No! Thanks to the quick treatment provided by his personal physician, he didn't survive. Good. But he didn't make it out with more- with much more than his life. Oh no. But he didn't make it out with much more than his life. He was permanently bedridden by the affair. No! Evidently, the sugar that I had put in his tea had contained poison, which had done irreparable damage to his nerves and muscles. Most of his body was completely immobile, except for his left arm. No. They put in the paralysis poison. Can I bring you something? Some water? Never had more than my fill of water. You don't need to wait on me hand and foot. <laughs> that face says you need to distract yourself by working. I... Remember what I told you. A noble family servants must always act with elegance and grace. 
You must always maintain your composure. But how can you expect me to remain composed? I, if I, if I had only examined the sugar more thoroughly. You never would have noticed, young lady. I examined the sugar and I didn't see a bloody thing wrong with it. He was damn crafty, that's for sure. Why would he do this? His inheritance, I presume. Something must have come up and he needed money quickly. There's no reason to poison your own father. Blood is nothing but an obstacle to ambition. Or maybe he just hated me. No, not an old man thinking that his son or grandson hates him. Fuck, no. How could anyone possibly hate you? Perhaps that could be said of the me you know. But when you live as long as I have, you're bound to make an enemy or two. The cocaine hit different. It kind of paralyzed all his body. Mine just happened to be my son. It was his son, not his grandson. Oh, I was planning to give him everything anyway. No, he didn't have to do this. It all would have been his. Master, killing me doesn't accomplish anything. But I guess it doesn't much matter. <sighs> Say, could I ask you something, young lady? Wh what can I do for you? I don't want it to get out that Hayden Rhodes was poisoned, so could you tell people that I passed away peacefully with a beautiful nurse tending to my every need? You're not dead yet! P please don't talk like that! You're scaring me! No stammering. B but I'm not saying it'll happen immediately, but I am an old man and one day you'll wake up and I'll be gone. This is about my own pride, not my son. The last thing I want is to go out with a black spot on my name. Tell me you'll do this, Giselle. He's never said my name before. As you wish. Thank you. You're a peculiar girl, you know. Sometimes you seem greener than the leaves in summer, and sometimes you seem like you've seen twelve kinds of hell. And every so often, you seem not of this world. I... Your skin is pale, your hands as cold as ice. At one point, I thought you might be death himself. But I was wrong about that. You have too big a heart to be death. You care too much. You must be carrying a very heavy cross on your back. I... What am I supposed to do? I don't want to lose you, Lord Hayden. I don't want to lose this life. You have someone, don't you, young lady? Someone you're dying to meet again. Y yes, but I, I don't know anymore. I don't know how long I'm supposed to keep waiting. If something doesn't happen soon, I, I don't think I can hold myself together much longer. I was so close to breaking down, and it was you who kept me on my feet. I'm sure you've tried to main- uh, Time for water. <laughs> I- Where's the son's house? I just want to talk to him repeatedly with a 9-gauge shotgun. Just a little- Words. <laughs> Lord Hayden's son versus 1000 degree knife! Who would win? <laughs> I'm sure you've tried to remain strong plenty of times, so I'll give you some different advice. A trick for when you think you're losing hold of yourself. Build a cocoon. A cocoon? A sturdy shell to keep your weak inner self safe. This world has no interest in protecting you, only swallowing you whole. So you mustn't readily expose your true self. You build a cocoon and you play the role you need to play. That way, the real you will remain unharmed. It's not pleasant to hide yourself like that, but it's better than letting the world crush you. 
but a word of warning. If you spend too long in the cocoon, the real you is liable to disappear forever. You'll be swallowed up by your own protective shell. I hope you find whoever it is before it's too late. Now, I think I'll get some sleep. All this talking's worn me out. As you wish. Good night, Master. See you in the morning. I see you in the morning, young lady. Please see him in the morning. <laughs> no! <laughs> no! Why? Oh. Can't even voice act the old man's stroke as he's paralyzed. Truly dedicated immersion. Thank you, thank you. You gotta, you gotta keep in mind the character that you're playing. He's, he hasn't moved for, for, who knows how long. He's been bedridden. Only one arm moving. That's, uh, it's, it's rough, bro. A rock rock bar Hidden sun versus fever crusher. Bring it. In. <laughs> uh, it's a bug fader. I mean, it's fader Morgana. Man, this dude talks a lot for a guy literally dumb. You can't say that. He's dead now. He's dead now. <laughs> Look what you did. <laughs> Aww. The next day, Hayden was dead. He had strangled himself with his left hand. I should have been more attentive. I should have recognized how much pain he was in. How much it crushed him to have been betrayed by his own family. I should have realized how he truly felt. How fragile he really was. He killed himself. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, we're, as you can see, we're going through it. <laughs> he, he, he was weak. He was old. He could do it, I suppose. I fell into a hopeless gloom. I could hardly believe that the quiet life I had finally attained had been shattered in the blink of an eye. Hayden's other servants quickly went their own ways, and I vividly remember the dirty looks they all gave me. Everyone who knew how he died assumed I had done it. I had no reason to kill him, though, but they had more than enough to believe so, for I had, indeed, been the last person to see him alive and I held firmly to the story he had asked me to tell. But I was unable to convince the other servants. His family was far more accepting of the story that he had departed for the next world happily. Though that did not make the truth any less heartbreaking, especially since I was the only one who knew it. Why does this always have to happen? I was happy. But I can never seem to keep hold of it for more than a flash. Despair always comes marching in to rip it away. What... what am I doing here? What kind of person were you, Michelle? What kind of person was I? <laughs> oh my god, Morgana. <laughs> I wanted to take in the words out of a keyboard. <laughs> Second of all, out of all the suicide deaths, that's one of the worst ones. Who else suicide did that? Yeah, but strangling yourself? Jesus. I guess coroners don't exist. No. <laughs> it's like 1909 or something like that. Or some kind of year. Or two decades before the first chapter, which I forget what chapter year that is. <laughs> Look who it is, the titular bitch. <laughs> it is I. <clears throat> She's very... Oh, oh. oh, my dear. You look positively miserable. Why should you despair at the death of some strange old geezer? Morgana, was Hayden one of those whom you wish to be reconstructed? <laughs> I have no interest in that wrinkled bag of bones. And if he was one of them, do you really think I would have let him go so peacefully? Damn. Peaceful. <laughs> peaceful. Well, that's what I'm saying. I will stretch and drink. Thank you. 
You're keeping the streamer healthy. Peaceful? You call that peaceful? You call his misery peaceful? I most certainly do. And since you do not seem to understand this, the pain of death lasts but an instant. The worst torture can only be inflicted upon the living. Setting two loved ones against one another, manipulating one into taking the other's life, and then forcing him to live with that. The stage hasn't even been set yet, my dear. And you would have me play a part in that. Indeed. You agreed to accompany me. You are here to be my guide. And you're doing a wonderful job of it so far. I... I haven't done anything. Oh, but you killed that old man, did you not? Huh? Thanks to you, my wish is one step closer to fruition. What? what What do you... What do you mean I killed Hayden? You mean you claim you... Do? <clears throat> you mean to claim you didn't? Tell me, who was it that put the poison sugar in his tea? No, no, I didn't mean to. Your intentions are irrelevant. Everything moves along the path forged by my wish, and you shall continue to follow its will. You know what? I'm done feeling like this. I don't want anyone else to go through what Hayden did. And what are you going to do about it? I, I'm done listening to you. Without me, you have no influence over this world. Oh. -ho. So I'll, I'll die. I'll take my own life right here and now. Ooh. I grabbed a nearby knife and held the tip against my breast. My hands were shaking, my heart pounding. My whole body was racked with terror, but I could have sworn I heard Morgana gasp. This was her one weakness, I thought. <sighs> what are you thinking? Don't do this, Giselle. Don't be foolish. Put the knife down right now. I'm... I'm done trusting anything you say. <clears throat> Morgana, you literally don't have a body and have to rely on me to do shit. Shut the fuck up and suck my dick. <laughs> Damn, exists. Did, did she hurt you more? <laughs> but she's being a bitch, yeah. Strangulation is not peaceful. Giselle is not a murderer. She is the gaslight girl keep. Literal girl. She is a girl keep. She's keeping Giselle under her finger so that she can carry out her whims. <laughs> If anything, the son is the mastermind because he set up the sugar poison. Yeah, but the problem is... Yeah. But, like, you don't want anyone to know that. Hayden didn't want anyone to know that. Also true, wise. An extra sip for the boys. Okay, but, like, regardless. Yes, yes. It's a... It's a... Terrible situation. <clears throat> Giselle, put the knife down. I've missed you so very much, Michelle. I've wanted nothing more than to see you again. But if my being Morgana's guide is going to cause other people suffering, then I can't. It's all over, Morgana. Oh. Oh, she did it for real. Uh, huh? There's no blood. Not even pain. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. I told you not to be foolish, but you just wouldn't listen to me. <laughs> Such a silly girl. <laughs> I really am. <laughs> Aww. I couldn't even die if I wanted to. Learning that absolutely crushed me. My backup plan, the one escape route I had thought available to me, had been ripped away. <clears throat> Girl, you died ages ago. That's true. She forgot. 
He literally died by his own hand. Yeah. Oh, she tried to full send it. Morgana versus Makima. Who gaslit gatekeep girl boss to better? Ooh, I don't know yet because I'm a, uh, I'm an anime watcher. I don't know anything about Makima yet. Like in canon, I don't know anything yet. But I know, I know some people hate her. <laughs> you, you're either a Makima lover or you're a Makima hater, and I want to know why. <clears throat> My spirit crumbled, and I felt myself sinking into a vast darkness. I began losing my grip on myself, which is when I recalled Hayden's advice. Build a cocoon, cocoon, cocoon. It was the only option I had left, my final chance at protecting myself. Although ultimately, I was unsuccessful in that endeavor, as you know. But by that point, my mind and spirit had all been put lost. Eroded away by the years of solitude, the witch's whispers, the brief glimmer of happiness, and the eternal, boundless darkness that had left me in. It was in that moment that all light drained from my eyes, and it was in that moment that the maid was born. Wait! Wait! Damn! <laughs> Fuck, bro. It's Nelly from the first chapter! <laughs> you either live long enough to become the villain. End sentence. <laughs> All I know is she's genuinely a terrible person. I'm ready to see it. I'm ready to see the shit. I know, I know Fujimoto writes weird shit. I'm ready to see it. <laughs> Four-year-old spotted pitbull, go! <laughs> God gives his hungriest pitbulls to the smallest four-year-olds. <laughs> yeah, I forgot her voice, but it has to be very childlike, right? Mm. Mm. Where are we? Where are we on the on the? <sighs> Tehe, Tehe. Hee <laughs> hee. Ah, uh, children. Oh, dear smell! Come over here! There are so many beautiful flowers! Oh, boy voice. Now, Nelly, there's no need to run. You're going to fall and you can't say I didn't warn you. Hello! I've never seen you before! Are you the new maid? Good afternoon. Ah, uh, no, 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 that's not her voice. Good after- ooh, ooh, I forgot her voice already. But she's broken, um, so do I give her a different voice? What is Giselle's voice? It's this, right. Good afternoon, Lady Nelly. That is correct. It is an honor to serve you. Oh, oh, did you do all this? Oh, I can't get that high and be loud at the same time. <clears throat> this music is nice, but mildly off-putting. Yeah, it's a little... Ooh, skewed, maybe. Okay, ain't no way a kid says dear. She's a demon spawn maid. Kill her. Maid. Kill. <laughs> You're not wrong. Um, If you go back... Ah, the VOD must be up already. Yeah. If you go back to the first chapter, uh, you'll find out. You'll find out. Um, uh, it sticks tongue out. Ugh, what Nelly's deal is. <laughs> I did not. The garden was your grandfather, Lord Hayden's work. Wow! Is grandfather a wizard? <laughs> Perhaps he was. I'm sure he would be delighted to know you like it. Did grandfather like flowers? Yes, he loved them quite dearly. Wow! I love flowers too! I've never seen a garden with so many pretty flowers! Did you know this kind of flower is called a rose? Uh. <laughs> Maid, commit Hayden. <laughs> <laughs> Just like our name. Why, yes, they do sound alike. And like the flowers, you are also a very sweet little girl. <laughs> Say, what's your favorite color of rose? I... 
like all colors. But you don't like any the most? That's too bad. My favorite is pink. Pink roses are so pretty. <coughs> Jesus. <coughs> Indeed they are. Ah, jeez. There you are, Nelly. Boy. Oh, my apologies. Please don't mind my sister. Oh, not at all. We were having the most wonderful time. I forgot her voice. Forgive me. It's gone. There, there are three characters on the screen. It's gone. <laughs> That's good. I imagine we'll be seeing each other around, so it's a pleasure to- Dear smell, dear smell. Let's see what the inside's like. Mother says I have my very own room. Uh, slow down, Nelly. I beg your pardon. The insert. I forgot her voice. Uh, it's gone! What? How did I lose? How did it slip through my fingers? Isn't Giselle's voice like this? But broken. So I made it a little lower. That's That was what my mindset was. Remember? <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> Okay, but for real, it's weird to see kids talk so formally. They're royalty. This is like 1900s, and they're like, Oh, dearest brother of mine. <laughs> it's a uh, strange, bizarre. The inseparable sibling- No, broken. The inseparable siblings ran off toward the mansion, hand in hand. It was a heartwarming sight. But the next moment, when they stepped inside, I saw something else. The darkness enveloping the mansion seemed to flare up, the open door gaping them on to its hungry bowels. The whole house looked as <laughs> the whole house looked as though it was cackling. It was, I presume, the witch Morgana's madness taking form, a manifestation of how she felt now that her centuries in the making wish was bearing fruit. Those two children were the ones Morgana had been waiting for. Had I still had any willpower to fight left in me, I would have taken them by the hands and sent them in the bu bu <coughs> I would have taken them by the hand. Ah, let me t let me start it from the the top. <laughs> this just in: two kids are gonna fucking die. Uh, um, worse. <laughs> they don't die. They don't die. They don't die. I recommend you check out the rest of the game. <laughs> it's very interesting. I mean, you've heard the chapter rundown that I do. It's interesting. Incestri- uh, incestri- is incestri- uh, inc- 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 interesting. The chapter is interesting. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> sorry, she is like broken on the inside, so I have to like adapt, overcome. Freud. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Fatal Morgana. Had I still had any willpower left to fight, I would have taken them by the hands and sent them someone. <laughs> Why? Why can't I read the line? Had I still had any willpower left of, Had I still had any willpower to fight left in me, I would have taken them by the hands and sent them somewhere far away. I would have done something before the house swallowed them up. But instead, I just gently lowered my eyes. Misfortune would surely sink its teeth into those two children before long. Pain and misery would befall them. I knew no good lay ahead for them, but my heart had all but frozen solid. I had my hands full taking care of myself, so I let Hayden's beloved grandchildren fall into the witch's hands. I was, for all intents and purposes, Morgana's marionette. Oh. Also, god damn it, can we have siblings that just don't fuck, please? <laughs> Oh, Vermintide 2, it is free on Steam, that's true. I forgot to get it. Thank you for the reminder. 
Hey, Persona 5 Strikers is on clearance at GameStop for $4.98. Don't tell me that. I bought it full price because I'm a fool. And I didn't even play like more than three hours of it. I'm a god's damned fool. Are you playing the new P5 port? Persona 5? I played Persona 5 already. Both Persona 5 and Royal. So I'm gaming. Uh, this, however, is the P5 port of Fata Morgana, yes. Um, oh. No mouse cursor. <laughs> Wait, I joined late. Welcome in also, Zill. Arts, free note. Hi, hi. Are the siblings fucking in general or fucking each other? Oh, um, so. Okay, spoilers if you don't. If you want to check out the VODs I have, spoiler time. I'm going to say what happens to the siblings. Uh. <laughs> Can we please have siblings that don't fuck or don't want to fuck? Nelly is obsessed with Mel. Like, obsessed, obsessed. And it's interesting because it gets to the point where she goes fucking insane and, like, it gets on top of him and, like... I don't remember what happens after that, I'm not gonna lie to you. Maybe one of them dies to get out of the situation, or maybe, like, they, they push and run. I remember a lot of running. Mel did a lot of running. Um, but... The, there was a scary point. There was a, a point point, and Nelly was like, she she was like that. Like he had a, a girl of interest, and she was pissed. She was like, "Well, dearest Mel, why aren't you hanging out with me? I wanted to go to the theater. I have no care for these other suitors, Mel. I just want to be with you." And it was like that, and oh, 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 it got it got interesting. So I do like recommend actually checking it out. Um, Persona Five, the Keita in Palace Morgana. <laughs> Persona Five Morgana is a girl here, and she is a bitch, bitch witch. I bought it full on release, but I never finished it. Oh, play it. It's nice. You would like it. I'm sure. And uh, I'm good still. So. Oh, today was kinda a, a roller coaster. Do you want to hear about it? How have you been though? While I talk about it. <clears throat> today I almost passed out. <laughs> um, 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 I dis- okay, I'll, I'll tell the story again. Uh, Meryl already heard it, but sorry, you're gonna have to listen to it again. Morgana sucks with Ryuji, don't. What do you mean? Wait, 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 hold on. What do you mean? Morgana should have been a cute girl, though, yeah. Oh, but the. the his Ikemen, it, it was kind of basic? True, kind of basic. But it was nice. Nah, I'm here to listen. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, my day was okay. Um. <clears throat> I, I, after watching YouTube shorts for a long time, I got very upset with myself and I scrolled, like, I scrolled to a YouTube short that was like, stretching, um, here's how to stretch your so-and-so-and-so, and I was like, you know what, yeah, I hit that point, I hit that point, I got up immediately, and I did that stretch, and then I did, like, their 10-minute stretch follow-along video, and I was gaming, um, then I decided, you know, I'm gonna shower later, I might as well work out, so... I pull up like a video, like something, 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 burn. And maybe that was my mistake. It was like an intense video. Uh, but I do it. I do the workouts and I'm like, my, my legs are shaking, but like I'm gaming. I get up and I'm like, okay, you know what? Might as well throw the fucking arm exercises in. Now that I'm here, I get the weights. I, I do reps on both sides, of course. Uh, at one point, I even was like, I don't want to do this exercise. I'll just do dump jumping jacks. So, like, I'm putting in the work. I'm putting in the good work. And then, my hubris. <laughs> I was fine at that point. I was feeling okay. And then I decided, you know, I need to fix my posture a little. I'm going to lean up against the wall and straighten my neck. And then put my shoulders back so that my posture is okay. Turns out... That's a one-way ticket to 
getting off the wall and then walking a few steps forward and then suddenly feeling like oh oh it's hot oh i'm losing hearing oh i might pass out <laughs> so i'm like oh shit oh fuck google google i worked out too fast i, th I think i'm gonna pass out what do i do <laughs> And, oh, I hope you didn't hear my bones crack. And, uh, so I'm there, I'm like, oh, it says, it's, I'm reading, like, through my, my tunnel vision, like, wait, sit, put your head in between your legs. Like a dumbass, I put my knees up, like, I sit with my feet up on the bed and then put my head in between my legs, like some imbecile they mean to put your head down <laughs> like so that the blood flows through it and i realized that um later than you should realize but i was okay i also i'm also all right <laughs> i'm fine i'm fine <laughs> google please there's no time to explain how do i i was scared i was going to i even messaged someone at like i feel like i'm gonna pass out i worked out too fast what do i do and like, uh, <laughs> and um, they said, bro, lay down. And I was like, oh, okay. I, I know it's not like a, a wrong thing now. I can lay down. And, and so I felt better. I showered without falling over. That's a big plus. I also was afraid of that. Like, oh no, what if the heat from the shower, what if... What if hot water actually messes up my blood flow and it I, I die? <laughs> but it didn't happen, so it's fine. Um, that was one part of it. <laughs> There's also a job hunting story that I told. And sounding like a water bottle getting crinkled when walking on the stairs. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Oops, sorry. Pain, misery is the first thing I read. How about you? <laughs> it's been comfy, can't complain. Got a wheel bearing for the car fix, so reliable transport is a go. Base! <clears throat> I couldn't imagine how car, like, taking care maintenance is. But I imagine it's very costly. Uh, but also, like, relief bringing when you actually fix the problem. So good! I'm glad you had a comfy, good good day they came in morgana should have been permanent too yeah oh you know you know dr hakuto maruki <laughs> he is my type tee <laughs> glasses and uh five o'clock shadow and uh messy hair goddamn goddamn <laughs> uh, awuga for real Anyway, I could tell the job hunting part later after a little reading. Oh! <laughs> what? Whoa, who's your type? Arts. You... <laughs> the frame one, shut up. <laughs> tell me your top three waifus. Utaba on Haru. <laughs> Makoto, ah, I see. Hey, you know, actually, I did cry at Makoto's awakening. It was kind of relatable as like a, as one of those perfect kids, and then you have to, you have to bend to other people's wills a lot, especially, like, uh, like in the, in Makoto sense, you know. What the fuck? How did you not guess her in one of them? <laughs> Cause she's not my favorite. <laughs> Those are my top three. I mean, no. Honestly, Futaba is like mega relatable, obviously. Haru is very cool. Shut up. <laughs> An is... I think An's okay. She's cool too. I forgot. No, you know why? It's because I like, like, my boy is Ryuji. I've never had, like, a, such a strong, like, blonde best friend. <laughs> Ryuji's so good. Ryuji, like, that was my first, like, max out. For real, for real. Maybe Ryuji's my waifu. 
I'll say that. Naoto based. Naoto so based. Oh, Naoto so based. <laughs> On is too much of a bestie. Oh no, wait. Uh, I'm advancing text when I scroll. We can continue Persona 5 talk later. Maybe I'll, I'll end a little early and then we could chat. That sounds good. Just remind me, we're talking about Persona 5. Morgana. Morgana. Ah. Ah, at long last. At long last, it has arrived. The time I have been waiting for so, so long for has arrived. Darling, devoted Giselle, I know not how to describe for you the fiery excitement burning within me. Ooh, I know. I can tell you my story. Oh, backstory? Tell you exactly what that mild-mannered little boy once did. You'll be open to listening now, won't you, my dear? And you'll surely understand that I'm doing nothing wrong. She did nothing wrong. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I think Utawa... <laughs> Utawa is... So nice. That's my answer. <laughs> Because you're my ally, my trusty servant. You and I, we live in the same world. We're as close as family. Oh, <laughs> yeah, she's very. Are we not? Yes, as you say. <laughs> so let us curse them, all of them. Let us inflict a pain worse than physical torture on them. Let us put their souls on the rack for all eternity. Curse them. Make them suffer. Curse them. Now, listen carefully, Giselle. This is a tale of wicked men and my curse upon them. Ah, backstory. Yeah, I know you freak. Uh, uh, no. Impossible. You don't know my tastes. <laughs> no. It can't be! <laughs> the witch... Mm. Uh, the witch spat her curses for some time. The bile overflowing from her words. The pure, unadulterated hatred brimming within. <laughs> Don't head pat me for that. Consumed me more than the horrifying things they described. She was brutally honest. Each word a carefully sharpened blade of animosity. How much bitterness did you have to carry inside you to become like her? How long did you have to feel nothing but hatred to become like her? I felt like, if I let my guard down, I would be consumed by her enmity. It would become mine and I would grow to despise them myself. All the while, I kept my mind on one single thing. That is, what was left on my mind. Oops. Damn! Damn your search history betrays you! <laughs> no! That's not my search history you're worried about. Everyone has an art Twitter. <laughs> that is what was left of my mind, locked away inside a shell of my own creation. It was that solitary truth that allowed me to hold on to my human emotions, to continue believing. I'm always waiting. My love will never fade. When I was still my old self, I called them master and would do anything for them. Michelle. What was their name? They were beautiful. They had pearly white hair and ruby eyes. They are going to come for me. Ooh. Cool. Isn't it such a fear to forget? Ah, that is for me. That's maybe why I should journal more. I don't really want to forget. Michelle, all I can remember about you is your name, your glassy white skin, your fiery red eyes, 
and your snow-colored hair. Nothing else. <laughs> Fumi. <laughs> and that's why, when I saw her that night, dripping from the storm raging outside, I thought, you're finally here. Because I didn't remember enough to know any better. Ooh. You already know who I speak of, don't you? The person who called upon Rose Manor that faded stormy night. The girl with the almost translucently pale skin. Oh! <gasps> Girl's love? Chillingly white hair and eyes like jewels. Ah, what a beautiful girl. Her hair, her eyes, her porcelain skin. It all matches the person in my memories. She must be the one I've been waiting for. If she is. What? <laughs> Oops, maybe don't trust a lady who is so evil she might as well have horns on her head. Teehee. <laughs> you're right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. But she was in a desperate position. I don't know if you were there for her contract signing. Her contract signing with the witch. I'd worry, I'd worry about forgetting things if it didn't mean I can experience things for the first time again and make way for new memories. Oh, that's a good stance on it. Yeah, you can always make new memories. Yeah, true. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Is something the matter? Oh no, I don't know what to give this voice. Oh, fuck, because I gave the white-haired girl's voice to... To Giselle, and now Giselle and the maid's voice are the same. Uh. Michelle's only crime was playing Mori Callie. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he likes MCR, uh, BMTH, um, <laughs> like. What's her? Mori Calliope. Calliope. Yeah, I forgot the name that I just said. <laughs> he played red and I loved him for that. <laughs> Mori's red album kind of banged. Did it not? <laughs> White haired girl, what voice do I give you? I don't want to give you a breathy high voice because that's already taken. Hmm. What if I gave her, like, what if I did not, I know I have a voice of my own and my potential. <clears throat> no, I just thought I felt someone watching us. <laughs> it's only your imagination, I'm sure. Oh, but it feels mismatched because I got the bro- my voice is broken inside. Me! What if I switch him up? What if I switch him up right now? Ugh, damn it. <clears throat> because she's very ethereal and very like, wow. And then she's very like, I'm broken on the inside, but it's... It's okay. If not your imagination, then perhaps some- mm, some un- mm. Mm -hmm. Hi, hybrid. Welcome in. Mm -hmm. How are you? How is the day? <clears throat> we'll be doing a little chat later in like 10 minutes, so we'll game. I am the maid of this mansion. I am the maid of this mansion. I have been here for indescribably long yes yes if not your imagination then perhaps some unforeseen force was watching you unseen force are you familiar with how people refer to this mansion rose manor yes indeed it is called rose manor because you can smell the sweet fragrance of the rose garden even at a great distance but that is not what I meant. It is said 
that a witch resides within the house. A witch? I have not heard any such stories. You probably wouldn't have. It was a very, very long time ago. Nothing you need concern yourself with. You have a peculiar presence about you. Should I consider that a compliment? <laughs> a peculiar presence, she says. Does she sense something in me as I do her? This has to be her, then. Her name. I need to ask her name. It's getting late. You should get some rest. A room has already been set aside for you. But first, may I ask you one thing? Yes? I do not believe you have given me your name yet. My name? My name is... Michelle. <gasps> what? Which witch? <laughs> Can I request a recap? Why is there a white-haired girl? So. Um, Giselle has been utterly broken, as I have described. She has been there for so long. She has experienced the death of her favorite master so far. Um, at, at her hand, technically not really. Um, Morgana is an evil witch, you know that. And she gaslit her and manipulated her, and she's utterly broken on the inside because of her master's death, and she has cocooned her true self away in order to protect herself, in order for her to keep the hope alive that she would meet Michelle in another life. This is Michelle with an L-E at the end, and she believes that it is who she has been waiting for for centuries on centuries on centuries on centuries. The correct term is gas licking, actually. <laughs> <clears throat> she didn't block the mix. Oh, <laughs> fuck. To everyone in chat and past who said it was Michelle with. Michelle. Michelle. <laughs> Michelle with the hard CH. Michelle. Oh, Michelle. I never considered that pronunciation. Michelle. Mm hmm. <clears throat> You... you are the one. What? You are the one I've been waiting for. Um... That's not her voice. <laughs> I've endured so much in anticipation of this moment. So that I could reunite with you. Uh, um... You came to this place to see me again, did you not? Held tight to those wonderful memories until you could make it back to me. I never gave up hope. I always believed, and I hope you'll praise me for that. And I ask you, to please say my name. To please make me... Uh, um... I... I don't know... anything about you. My honest reaction. Ooh. <laughs> I just remembered you saying that in a witch's voice, yeah. I'm sorry. You seem to be confusing me for someone. We've never met before now. <laughs> you jest. You are Michelle, are you not? Th that is my name, yes. But it's a fairly common name. Surely you're confusing me with... That cannot be. That white hair, white skin, those red eyes, and that name, the name of the Archangel. Everything about you is the same. How can you say that you are not my Michelle? Please, Michelle, remember for me. S stay away from me! Uh. <clears throat> uh, uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be rude. Um, You would reject me. I'm so sorry. I honestly don't know you. <clears throat> Do you care nothing anymore for the time we spent together? We have not spent any time together. You would deny everything. I'm sorry. I see. I see. So you feel nothing for me anymore. You do not need to say anything. I understand. You're feeling a great deal of disgust towards me. No! 
I... Or perhaps it is fear. Yes, you are always so kind. You would not easily allow yourself to succumb to hatred. <clears throat> Henrique? Henrique? Hello? People saying I never gave up hope right before having their hopes crushed is consistent as <laughs> in this game. Yes, it is. <laughs> I never gave up hope. Uh, hopes shattered. Body, like, crumbles to dust, destroyed. Dreams, aspirations, courage, uh, like, a fe uh, like, gone. All of it gone. <laughs> um, welcome in, though. I assume you know the game or you've been lurking for a while. So, hello. Wait, so did she find Michelle and not Michelle and the cruel joke of fate is that they're not the- I'm going to cry if Morgana comes in and she's like, oh ho ho. Uh, gotcha, bitch. <laughs> she's always done in by a fucking name being the same. Imagine! I would be so- I would be done in too, honestly. Like, you think it's the love of your life? You're convinced it's the love of your life. And they say they don't know you? Fuck. Fuck! All that waiting you did for nothing? Like, all that hope gone, dashed? Horrible. Tragedy. I understand. Please, forget everything I've said. Who are you? I... I am... I am but a simple mate. Nothing more. <laughs> Laughable, isn't it? I no longer recognize Michelle as anything more than a concept. Man or woman, elderly or infant, as long as they had white hair, red eyes, and the right name, they were you. I needed anything I could get. I was so desperate the thought never even crossed my mind that she was not you. What do you think? Seeing me like this, that I'm helpless and hopeless. Oh. Listen to this, Morgana. Michelle is back. She's finally come for me. But she does not remember anything, it seems. Not me, not our past, nothing. She saw me and was afraid, in fact. Are you listening, Morgana? No, she's here. Hey there, are we sad yet? Yeah, we're broken, sad, depressed, all that stuff. Welcome in, Em. <laughs> ah, darling, devoted Giselle. You poor, pitiful soul. That must have been quite harrowing. But don't worry, you still have me. Besides, this might not be your only chance. As long as you continue on, Michelle could appear before you again. Do you think she'll remember me next time? I can't say. That's up to Michelle. You do have another option, though. I am. <laughs> Thank you for the sob. Cry, cry. <laughs> Michelle did have red eyes. Exactly the same features as the white-haired girl. Um... Like just now, the white haired girl, but you know, not her. Not him, rather. <clears throat> oh my god, Morgana, I will literally kick your teeth to the back of your head. I hate you, I hate you, Morgana, I hate you. <laughs> also, six months is like quite a while. Happy to have known you for that long. Nice. You do have another option, though. Forget Michelle yourself and seek out a new master. Someone who can be yours. Someone dedicated and faithful. Who needs you. Someone worthy of this mansion. Someone who needs me. That's right. Michelle didn't need you, after all. It's alright. Don't worry. You have plenty of time. All the time in the world, actually. The whole fucking... You have an eternity. You have an eternity of time. So yeah, in the first few chapters, she was 
who we were following the whole time. She was the maid of the house. Um, and it's interesting now to see that we are the person who she sometimes talks to. Isn't it wild uh, for, for Fado Morgana, knowers and goers? <laughs> We thought for the whole time we were this bitch. No, we were. Wait, considering that they're two different people. I remember I had a theory where I thought they were the same person, the maid and her. But now it's kind of clear that she was so obsessed with her because she thought. But she also reappeared like several centuries, several times. Interesting, I don't know. <laughs> One eternity later. <laughs> it's this is a little recap of uh, chapter one. It is a small world, isn't it? <laughs> oh, <laughs> long time Feta heads relive in these moments. True. Remember, remember when we ran through the rain uh, in distress and turmoil because something happened. Oh, <laughs> and then rocks fell, everyone died, the end. No one was happy, the story's over, thank you for watching. Speaking of thank you for watching, let's talk in a bit. Oh, that was rain. <laughs> it's raining again today. I kind of wonder what happened to him after he fled from the mansion. Although, I suppose it doesn't much matter to me. The witch is surely watching him. <coughs> Such a dreadful storm. It sounds like someone crying. Pissing all by yourself, handsome? <laughs> Hello there. Are you frying chicken in there? <laughs> Check out a hard neck biscuit. Hey yo. <laughs> the the very like gentle. Hey yo. I was at that point completely out of my mind. Broken. My smiles, frowns, and gasps had all been replaced with imitations. Shortly afterward, the flaxen-haired boy moved out of the house and went on to become a priest. The girl fell ill a few years later, her disease eventually taking her life, but the boy never once returned home. The Rhodes family crumbled. I couldn't bring myself to grieve for them, or to reflect on Hayden's sorrowful end. I simply waited for the time to begin moving once more. Man, 1603, it wasn't even 1900s, it was 1600s. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, one century later. Little remains to be said about my broken self, but as I stated before we began, this is the maid's tale, so I would like to take this opportunity to elaborate on events I was unable to show you before. That is, if you can bear listening to such a dismal, miserable story. I already told you of my meeting with the beast, so I will begin the second tale from here. After Bestia slaughtered the merchant who showed up at the mansion, his mad laughter echoing through the halls. Hmm, Yukimasa, I remember he? He he ha ha ho ho he 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 he. He's I could I could like insane laugh right now, but I would have to step away from the mic. This whole thing would have been avoided if Michelle just stayed home and played Smash Bros or something. <laughs> No, that, that's the problem. Michelle was home for 10 years. <laughs> Michelle had only stayed home. 
Oh, the laughter's over. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Yuki Masa, I forgot. Let's just give him a fucking crazy Adachi voice. Like, <sighs> Hey. <laughs> Did you hear that? Did you hear his screams? <laughs> he said it was a monster. <laughs> the mutilated body lay sprawled across the living room floor. As you can imagine, that was my first time ever seeing such a bloody, mangled corpse. I could not look directly at it, so I averted my eyes. Hey, hey, you saw it. I just proved that beasts are stronger than humans. Indeed you did. Nah, I know, I've got a great idea. You asked if I wanted to become the master, and I said I did. Which means you work for me, isn't that right? So you'll do whatever I tell you to do, won't you? What would you have me do? Chop up his arms and legs and make a stew out of him. And don't you hesitate or you'll end up like him. Yes, master. He's trying to assert his total dominance over me. It's not proper behavior for the master. Although, I am the one who offered him the role. Do it. He's an utterly mad beast. Why is your mad laugh so good? I didn't think it was that good to be honest. I could do better. <laughs> a stew. I was thinking more like a filet or a steak. Like, we got prime meat here. This is human meat. We could get it like well done. Not well done. What's the one? Medium well. Medium well, even on the rare side, you know? Or instead of a stew, couldn't we have a chili instead? <laughs> get some beans in there. Beans and man. Uh, I missed the part with this guy. He seems charming. <laughs> uh, he's a... He's quite the salesman. He's a, he's a traveling, like, merchant. And uh, only a little bit insane. Only a little bit of a beast. He got that dog in him. <laughs> but horrible. Parentheses, worst. Forget that dog in him. He is that dog in him. Say <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that before. <laughs> he he really is. His first PNG, or the first PNG you see of the beast, rather, is just this big, like, black hulking figure with red eyes. But am I really all that different? Ugh, there's blood all over my hands. It sounds like someone's laughing. Is it him? Or is it her? No matter what happens, it won't affect me. The cocoon is not the real me. <laughs> Just a little. I was looking down at what could only be described as a pile of human debris. I had done this. But that fact did not register with me. I felt nothing at all. Not regret. Not anger. Not sorrow or despair. Bleh. Put it on the fire. He said he treated in spices. That should give him a very unique flavor. How am I supposed to work with this? I was quite simply puzzled. No one had ever made such a request of me in my hundreds of years at the mansion. That's all I was. Puzzled. But he interpreted this hesitation or fear. So he grabbed me by the shoulder, knocked me to the floor, and skewered me with that curious blade of his. <laughs> Am I really all that different? Every teenager is coming of age question. Am I different enough? For the first few moments, he wore that deranged grin of his. But as the seconds passed, it slowly transformed into shock. Not a drop of blood spilled from my breast. And the instant he realized it, I saw revulsion in his eyes. Him, of all people. A man who cackled as he slaughtered others, was disgusted by a mere maid. It was 
absurd. So much so, I almost wanted to cry. <laughs> you... Is that all, Master? Are you not going to dismember me? You could try stabbing my face, or my neck, or my stomach, or any other part of me. Maybe then I might die. No, oh, now, don't look at me like I'm some exotic creature. <laughs> <laughs> oh, quit laughing. Why should I? My only distinctive feature is my smile. I have nothing else. My hands are covered in blood, but I can still smile. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I get it now. You're the witch, aren't you? Ah, I see. Only monsters ever had a place here. Every so often I hear a woman's voice in my head. That's you, isn't it? You're the witch. Monster, witch, maid. What am I? Who is Giselle? Michelle said she was spirit, true to herself. That she often laughed and cried and shouted. <laughs> He's like, wait, who ordered <laughs> who ordered the real doll? <laughs> uh oh. Uh, they uh, I didn't I didn't order I didn't order this. But I don't know anyone like that. I'm just a maid. Nothing more than a servant. The woman's voice he had said he heard was probably the real witch's. But I had no interest in that. I almost would have preferred not having to think about anything at all. Nothing would cause me to waver if my head was empty. A world without joy or sorrow. Sounds quite wonderful. But nothing ever went the way I planned. <laughs> For the white-haired girl, whom I thought I would never see again, appeared before me once more. I was quite nearly in a panic. Beneath my perfectly practiced smile was a veritable storm of emotions. Faint hope flared up within my shell. Perhaps this time, Michelle would remember me. But that hope was, unsurprisingly, in vain. Again? <laughs> hope in vain again? Is someone there? Yes, I came by to ask if there was anything you needed. I cannot offer you anything extravagant, not like before, but I am here to provide you with anything in my capacity. Head empty is the way I agree. <laughs> I appreciate the offer, but I need nothing. Being allowed to stay the night is more than enough. Do you work here in the mansion? Yes, indeed I do. I've been here for a very very long time. A very long time? Um, you might think this is an odd question, but have we met before? Something about you seems familiar. Flabbergasted! And I get the feeling I've been in this mansion before. Yes, we have met. It was quite some time ago, though. When? Was it? I, um... It was an unimaginably long time ago. Do you remember a boy and a girl with flaxen hair? Flaxen hair? I apologize. My memory fails me. Do you not remember me either? I was afraid of this. She doesn't remember anything this time either, but I will not be so pushy this time. I cannot bear to be so blatantly rejected again. I see. You should probably not push yourself to remember then. There were joyous times, and there were less than joyous times. But 
Would you be so kind as to answer one question? What might your name be? My name... My name is... Michelle. White hair, red eyes, and the name Michelle. Why must you continue to bring me pain? Why can you not set me free as you were supposed to? I see. So you are Michelle again. Again? You should get some rest. I will make tea for you in the morning. Also... Go on. Close your eyes. Unsurprisingly, in vain is the theme of this game. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, in vain. Dashed again. I know, I know, right? You remember being in a... Michelle, do you remember... Bring me the horizon. Bring... BMTH. Familiar, but... No, I don't know any of their songs. I'm sorry. <laughs> the white-haired girl lay so quietly in her bed I could not tell whether she was asleep or awake. Even the sound of her breathing was too faint to hear. Standing over her, looking down at her, the locked away despair and wails of lamentation I thought myself no longer capable of came bubbling back to the surface. But can you honestly blame me? I had been waiting for Michelle for so long. She was the one thing holding me up. She was the only thing keeping my broken self from falling apart completely. Yet, she claimed not to remember me. Did you pity her, having to go through tragedy after tragedy? But every time she showed up, she said she did not know me, bringing me more, more and more grief. I had been waiting for hundreds of years, waiting for her for so long, my mind slipping away with every passing day, waiting and waiting and waiting. Ah, uh, um, my apologies. I have to be careful or I'll slip back to what I was then. If you weren't here holding my hand now, I... Tell me, you are Michelle, aren't you? That's... A relief to hear. Yes, thank you. I'm... I'm alright. Do you think I'm... as muddled as I feel? Let us return to the tale, then. You don't know what it feels like. You don't know how much it hurts for someone you've waited so long for to say they don't know you. You have no idea how much it crushes me. Rather than feel like this anymore, maybe I should just end it all with my own hands. I reached my hands out toward her slender neck. I was not an especially strong woman, but I thought even I would be able to suffocate her with relative ease. <clears throat> that face when your memory is so bad you start remembering yourself as a gay. <laughs> They're the same, I'm... Michelle must have been... Beautiful and... And gorgeous and... Pretty and... A woman. <laughs> Hell yeah. Wait. Wait a minute. I'm gay. <laughs> no, I don't think it would be awkward, actually. I think it would be pretty cool. She was blind at that, so she wouldn't be able to run. She, she would be able to run. She's blind, not paraplegic. She can run. Oh, the choke. <clears throat> the choke. Ah. Uh. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> However. Ugh. Uh. That was one thing I could not bring myself to do. I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> she wouldn't be able to run in the sense of finding an exit in a stranger's house. That's also true! <laughs> That's right. That's what she meant, probably. I ran and I ran and I ran. Though I knew I had nowhere to run. 
plunging myself into the mansion's darkness. I did not want to be there any longer. I did not want to have anything to do with her. But being an inhuman inhabitant of the house, I could not close my eyes or plug my ears to what happened within its walls. As much as I may have wanted to, it didn't matter where I was. I had no say in the matter. I was forced to observe the events until their tragic conclusion. Twisted, bloody madness. Their wretched wails creating a whirlwind of misery. When it was all over, Morgana cackled like a little girl. Excuse me. Man, they gave her like a hot hee hee hee. And every time it comes up, I'm like, oh, should I change your voice? But then again, they would just be like similar, I think. Like if I went... <laughs> Go on. It's like kind of the same, so I like the deeper voice. <laughs> run, boy, run. <laughs> Go on, you have a laugh too, my dear. There's nothing in the world better than this. He was a beast through and through. And what a fool he was to think he could become human. Ah, oh, I love it. He destroyed everything he had with his own hands. And then couldn't even manage to mourn for it. <laughs> quite the unfortunate fate. Ooh, quite the unfortunate fate, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Go on. Laugh with me. Laugh with me, my darling, devoted Giselle. Michelle is dead too, though. You worried about that tiny little detail? She'll show up again, of course. She is gaslighting her. She's also referring to Michelle as a, a girl when she's not. <laughs> his hubris hoisted by his own petard. <laughs> Look at him! Laugh with me, the fool! So you don't need to worry about a thing. You don't need to feel bad about any of this carnage. Rest easy, my darling devoted Giselle. If... you say so, then I shall not be concerned. <laughs> yes, that's good. Laugh. Laugh, my dear. <laughs> no, they're insane! Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Morgana, the progenitor of Gaslight Girl Boss, truly! I think this is a good place to wrap it up, though. We save and quit at 1863. This chapter is the, the, the male boss chapter. The trap your wife chapter. But we save. I'm looking forward to that one. The third visitor. Oh yeah. The the put your wife in a shed and and be a train entrepreneur. We saved. And we quit. And we go here. And then we go here. Like that. Maybe like that. Yeah. She's hanging out at home laughing. You know, she's laughing to herself too. Like, imagine... She's just like sitting there, hearing her voice, Morgana, and she's just like... <laughs> like, but she's mad! She's... She's going crazy! Oh, Fina kissed the Copen. It is, it is! So wait, Morgana got mad at a furry? Giselle's a furry? Hold on, what do you mean by that? <laughs> what, what did you mean by that? Just her and her inner demons, teehee! Ah, oh, poor, poor, poor Giselle. Ah, oh, the Torah, the, the tragedy of losing yourself over a long period of time, that's fucked. I don't think I've ever read anything that goes like so in-depth with it, like this. Like, imagining... Oh no, I've seen a Black Mirror episode where it's like they put they put your consciousness 
in a a program and it's like your personal maid and it knows everything that you would like because it's you but the 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 consciousness in the robot is so fucked like imagine not being in your own body not having a corporeal form and you just exist you just exist in the thing and there was one point where you can control the amount of time that passes within the device so the the, the guy set it for like a thousand days or six months or something like that and this this robot, this thing, your consciousness is in an empty white room. Absolutely nothing to do. You're just there. Like, your consciousness is eternally there. You cannot sleep. You cannot pass the time with anything. You're just existing. And it's so fucked. It's a really good episode. <laughs> no, sneezing from light is a photo. It's called a chew. Uh, it's photosensitive, phototropy, something, something, something. I forgot. But it, yeah, it's when there's very strong light, like sunlight, and you get exposed to it, and then you just have the urge to sneeze. Auto, I can look it up. A true reflex. Do 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 do. Autosomal dominant compelling helioophthalmic outburst is not what you asked for, but it's called a chew syndrome. <laughs> it's called photic sneezing or photic sneezing. I think it's cool. I like knowing the a chew fact. <laughs> You're basically a ghost. Wait, is this? No, no, no. It's a black mirror. It's the episode called White Christmas, if you're interested. Netflix. Um, <laughs> no corporeal body, you just exist. Yeah, that's called being online. <laughs> Some people, they're terminally online, and that's the true hell. <laughs> being stuck in time is just deep. Yeah, it. that's what's so, like, breaking about that episode. And that's not even, like, one of the main, like, mindfucks in that episode. Another one of the mindfucks is, like, not being able to interact with people because you are on, like, because they have technology in their eyes that allows you to block people. So if someone blocks you, you can't talk with their blob form. Like, they're grayed out, they're censored, no voice can go through or out. It's, it's a nice episode. Visual novellic crying is when you read Fata Morgana. <laughs> they call it, uh, they call it VN. VNC. <laughs> I was going to say I used to be terminally online, but, uh, I don't think I ever grew out of being terminally online. Ooh. <laughs> don't worry. At least you're not, like, someone on Twitter who actively starts arguments or, like, someone on TikTok who does the same. At least you have, like, some- some culture about you, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, that's- that's the dystopian future shit that Black Mirror likes to get into. It's interesting. I like it. Reminds me of a game called Katana Zero. I need to play Katana Zero. I need to play Katana Zero. Like, I need- I- I need. It's a need. I gotta one day. I didn't watch that episode. I remember the episode where a wife makes a clone from her husband's internet persona. Yeah, that one too! That one's very weird. And how she almost like goes insane at the end because of it, like... Ugh. Oh, ah, it's good. I like Black Mirror. Arts isn't here, so we're not going to talk about Persona 5. <laughs> Unless you want to. And the quiet kid in school, I don't say much, but I observe a lot. Yeah, based. I was the same, like, all throughout. <laughs> like, I, I say all throughout, but legitimately, I think it was, like, until high school. No. Okay, until high school, I started getting, like, a hint of how to socialize. And in college, I really found myself. 
but prior to that i i was socially inept like i did not talk i was very non-verbal <laughs> yeah it, it was fucked up right but it's nice oh yeah i do i forgot that i had redeems the end bits are green because my green screen ah i got a rig I want a rig. I want a rig. I want to make the wigglies and I want to have detailed parts. Oh, I want a rig. I've been the other way around. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, you seem you seem like the type that is more outgoing. Mhm. Mm I I just sense that vibe about you. I went the opposite direction too. Oh, I started out okay then went, "Oh, I actually don't want to deal with people." <laughs> yeah. I, I, making friends is, like, new and fun still, so I'm, I'm still, like, liking it. <laughs> Boyoyoing. Boyoyoing. Thank you. I did spend a good amount of work on this model and setting it up and stuff, so I appreciate it. And I'll do it all over again. Can I finish it within... Three months though? I don't think so. Maybe? Maybe. We'll see. Ah, the art though. Oh, I gotta work on the art for the model. Ugh. We'll see. If not, then I'll just, you know, show it off at a later date. No problem. Well, my peers in school were normies and almost everyone in uni was a weeb, so socializing was much better. Good! I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad that you have, like, the crowd, you know? Like... Everyone in school, high school too, was like normy for real, for real. God. God, all people talk about, ah, like, oh, normal stuff. Like the one person who watched like, uh, Daily Lives of Boys, I was like, whoa, you watch anime? <laughs> I learned how to be outgoing and to fit in with any type of people. The issue is now it gets really tiring to do so. And I've been in a very unhealthy way of just shedding friendships because they bored me. Ah, meaty people are the worst, though. I can understand that. Like, I'm, I, I have to admit, I'm also the type where, like, for example, I'll like a game, and then, like, I, I could, I could love a game. And then I stop playing it for a while. And then I completely forget that it's like my favorite game. Like, I... And then when I go back to it, I'm like, Oh, this is my favorite game! How could I forget? This is my favorite game! Like, and I see how that... I can, I can imagine it. Like, I'm sure I've done that with people too. <laughs> like, wow. I... Don't value this relationship as much as I thought. Let's... Let's... Uh, help ourselves essentially and i understand needy people like they need interaction a lot but i uh, i'm very much the type where it's like yeah if i have something to show you i'll show you if i have something to talk about with you whenever we get to talk i'll t i'll say it right it makes sense uh it'll be a while it'll be a while the, the new model stuff, but I appreciate the support. I plan to work on it on stream, because that's rigging, you know, it's a process. No clue what's planned, but I'm sure it'll be a fire. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you. T no tee. <laughs> Imagine socializing. I just stay in my cocoon like Giselle. Surely nothing bad will go wrong. Socializing? Your socializing right now exists. Can you believe it? <laughs> you could... Oh, if you meant like socializing, like going out. No, I get you. I, I, don't, I don't do that either. I stay in my house. <laughs> Imagine going out and like interacting with people. Wow. Crazy. <laughs> Are you being the the... But is it unhealthy if it makes you happier to find others? Did it in? I gotta admit, yeah, when you do interact with people like the the sparse times, it is fun. 
Just don't go to scary mansions. You'll be fine. Impossible. Oosh. <laughs> bye bye. What can I? How how do I summarize my experience? I found that like going out and socializing, it's nice from time to time. Like you get to hear people's stories and they they're sometimes funny, right? And you get to spend some good like physical time. Physical touch is a good love language, let me tell ya. Physical touch is, like, so nice. I, I may be touch starved, but it's so nice. <laughs> and that's good about socializing. Um, it's a new experience, and it brings you a different happiness. And, of course, I'm not, like, dissing... I'm not dissing like over discord stuff too. I love I love just like chilling out doing our own thing like Like you're just there. I don't know filing your tax application with them. It's based Just sitting there like running 14 dailies and listening to the boys talk for example <laughs> I've dealt with so many people I can keep up with so many topics. I don't understand. Ooh. Ooh, nice! Good skill! Isn't it interesting hearing about other people's, like, like, topics, like their fortes, for example? Yeah, the router in your car is going in for repairs? Yeah, I totally get it, man. What is a car router? Someone... What is a car router? <laughs> what does that do? I get... No, you know, that's the... That's the... The merit of it, too. Like, you get to ask... What's a car router? <laughs> I'm glad it's going in for repairs. Good. I forgot what else we were going to talk about other than P5. Oh, my job application thing. Yeah. Uh, so... Uh, it was just an interesting thought. Because I was looking at job stuff. And I came across this one that just said educator, facilitator. And then the salary was about 19 an hour. And I was like, what kind of job is $19 an hour? Ayo? Like, interesting. The router in your car- The car router- C Carter- <laughs> Huh? Ah, <laughs> uh, but right. Um... So I was looking at it and I was like, okay. You do seminars, you have to like drive to the places. So that seems a little- mm. That you must be enthusiastic, outgoing, do you want to have a positive impact on teens? Oh, I see. Sexual risk avoidance curriculum. Okay, that's pretty, like, solid. I look into it a little more. This is, like, a complete program- A program on, like, complete abstinence before marriage. And I was like, oh, well, that's not me. So... <laughs> So I was like, hmm, okay. But then I started to consider, what if I simply lied? <laughs> what if I simply was like, because it's so funny. You look at the requirements. Bachelor's degree. Excellent interpersonal and verbal skills. Ability to relate well with the target audience. Commitment to remain absent outside of marriage while working for this company. Like... <laughs> I gotta say to them, yes, I believe in no sex before marriage. I, 100%, I've never, never, me, look at me, I, I wouldn't, right? Right, I wouldn't. <laughs> Bachelor in related degree, I think it said. But imagine applying for it and convincing them. That's what I was going to say. That's what I was going to say, Meryl. Like, what if I said that? And what if I educated these teens in, like, a cool way? That was, like, my my fantasy. Like, I could be there and be entertaining to them. Because I know for sure, if they have an old white woman taking this role, these kids are not going to abstain from sex. <laughs> They're going to be bored out of their fucking mind at this seminar. But if I, like... 
I imagine like the best way to get to someone is like a just a heart to heart like be real with them like bros you don't want STDs you gotta be safe during sex and th this company like promotes abstinence but I don't <laughs> I can't say that they'll they'll fire me on the spot but I could be cheeky about it I could be like yeah I've had experiences that are kind of cringe so i wouldn't want you guys to have cringe experiences like that you don't want to be like you don't want to be like pinned down not being able to breathe like someone sweating into your eyeball you don't want that trust me <laughs> and abstaining is a surefire way to not get that <laughs> Please take the job, I want to hear all about it. It's super interesting, right? Like, what if? What if I could? The, the My only, like, gripe about it is I ha I would have to travel, like, to all the places. And I would have to take this, like, yearly seminar, it said? Yearly seminar about, like, the certification training of this thing, of this institute. <laughs> And, and like, I feel like it's inter- like it's interesting enough, my- my perspective on it. Why the fuck does the job require me to report pussy statistics? <laughs> As you can see here, over 60% of people your age has unprotected sex. That's not good. That's not good. Please be safe. <laughs> Please be- that is not good. We can fix this. We can fix us. <laughs> I think, you know, I could throw an application in. I could throw an application in. They might see like the content creator uh, experience and they, may, they might see me as a young person. And I, what if I just said I believe in abstaining? I thought I could believe in it. I don't have to practice it. <laughs> I thought you were going to say my only gripe about it, so I'd have to have- I'd have to not have sex. No, 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 no. If any- I'll cancel that thought right there. <laughs> just- just- just a smile and- and laugh at my funny jokes and my- my teehees. <laughs> listen. Listen, gamers. 60% of you have unprotected sex, but we can make sure 100% of you have protected sex. Am I right? Am I right? Let's get it. <laughs> they will fire me. That is, that is the... They hire, next day, fired. <laughs> first, you, first unsex the company, tomorrow, the world. This is my master plan. You're motivating me to actually apply. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Man, our absence teacher fucks. <laughs> but doesn't it make sense? Doesn't it make sense that someone like teaching about the risks of sex, no sex, right? It, it just makes sense. Like, imagine abstaining for all your life and you think it's great in the eyes of the Lord, but you don't know the first thing about fucking. Like, you don't know the first thing about when you're in a situation and something is going to happen to you and you're like, oh shit, no fuck, what do I do? They, they don't know. They've never done it. I've had that situation. <laughs> Cancel that. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, excuse me, what did you say? Ah, fun though, fun. Um, next time, we will be playing... I think I want to finish Endoparasitic, just to get it out of the way, you know? So next time, next Tuesday, we're going to game. And we're going to hopefully finish. Uh... But I may not be like a skilled gamer, so maybe it might take a while. I'm opening streams. <laughs> um, this person is at the end of the game. Oh, they're cracked, but they're at the end of the game. 
How about... How about... How about you, my good man? Let's see. <laughs> All unsex in our Christian server. Welcome to my Discord server where we unsex. <laughs> oh, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. As always. Man with one arm proves he can use it. <laughs> let's see, let's see. I rated the- I rated them last time, though. Fuck. Fuck. How are we looking? How are we looking, gamers? What if we... What if we made... More connections? What if we made more connections? What if? Mm, I'm going to look at the... The, 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 the... Yes, I also remember finishing Veda a month ago. Almost. <laughs> oh, I thought we were over. Like, I thought we were done with it a month ago. But it's just more and more. And it's like, oh, surprise, this is what really happened. Oops, surprise! Here's my true perspective. <laughs> Welcome to class, I'm Tan. I'm an abstinence slime. <laughs> I'm an abstinence advocator. <laughs> All pussies according to the company- <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> Our vision. All pussies, according to the company, must be as dry as the Sahara Desert. As dry as the desert that Jesus himself walked on. We believe in abstinence. And we believe that we can change these teenagers by telling them, Don't have sex. Just don't. And they'll believe us. Look at all these teenagers. There's five entries. Who say... That it changed them. We're doing good work. We're doing great work. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, please, please. Man, y'all getting sus as hell. What? <laughs> Ayo, 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 ayo. <laughs> I want vine blooms on all of those ayos. Please imagine. <laughs> N watching Neapolitan November. <laughs> what do you mean watching doesn't start with an N? Blasphemy. I'm going to raid someone. I swear I'm going to raid someone. I swear. I swear. I swear. What if we look up VTuber? VTuber. Please give VTuber. Cube. Wow. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Nothing but Neapolitan November. Let's fucking get it. Oh gosh, did you invade Morgana? Not yet! Not yet, but it, we're, out, we're on the real telling of the maid's tale. So, if that's any indicator, then we're there. But thank you for the 12 months, holy shit. We've known each other for 12 months, that's so crazy! <laughs> I'm still searching. I'm still searching for someone to raid, by the way. You came in at the tail end, sadly. Yes. <laughs> the real maid's tale. Non-stop- oh, you guys are gamers. <laughs> it is Poggy. <laughs> You're so cute, what the fuck? I'm happy to see you too, I hope life's been going good. Is the- is the job treating you well, Kip? <laughs> are you sleeping? Are you restful? I'm gonna raid Yusha. That's my decision. Yusha, 
is a hero VTuber. Part-time hero. They're playing a rhythm game right now. They do a lot of karaoke. They're a cute boy. Uh, they're also a chuny beal. Hee <laughs> hee. Restful kinda. That's okay. That's good enough. <laughs> I'm glad. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Among Us? <laughs> I hope you have a good night. Um, we're going to raid, Sha. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you, my cream. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I simply don't like it. I simply am tortured by the fan name you have given yourself. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. 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 Hi, Nero. Bye-bye, Nero. What does she mean by this? <laughs> Say the line. Uh, thank yes, honey. Thank you, Cream Pals, for watching the stream. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye.